Right, so we're back again for part two of the, um, the DMR GPS tracking and range testing um, video. Um, in the last video, part one, um, we just showed the basic principle of, of how we're going to set up a, a kind of a vehicle tracking system where you have um, one radio in one car and it's basically just um, sending out a beacon um, every minute and um, beaming those um, coordinates or sending those coordinates over the air to another radio which is basically connected to a PC. Um, and that's what we have here. So we've got the results of, of a drive around the town and um, the local area, and um, we're going to see where basically where what we've, what we've managed to get from that, um, and sort of trying to display those results on um, on Google Earth, which is quite interesting. Um, this high two GPS software, what it does is it it um, records the GPS coordinates and puts them in a log file, which um, is actually a KML file, which is easily openable by um, Google Earth. So let's have a look at that. So shut, minimize that program. If we open up Google Earth, I've already, I've already did, just done this, and you can see here quite a long <laughs> yellow line, which basically goes from from um, our start point, which is over here, um, right the way over to our end point, which you can see is quite a um, quite a populated area. And if if you know your geography, you'll know that this is this is Colchester. Um, so you can see this town here. Um, so if we zoom in a little bit closer, um, we can sort of see what's what's been happening. Um, so we've started our point over here, and if we zoom right right the way through, you can see our start point is. Oops, it's going off the scale. Um, our start point's here, and you see where it's where it's basically been. The car's been sitting outside for a little while, and it's just um you know, been sending out positions as it's trying to get a fix and everything else. So it's kind of a bit all over the place there. And then you can see we've kind of headed off up here. Um, now, as the positions are sort of doing, basically doing one every one minute, they're beaconing every one minute. Um, because of that, um, you know, you may find that um, in certain places you're going to, you maybe miss certain, um, uh, certain beacons and it doesn't actually pick them up. Now, Around here, you'd kind of expect this to be quite accurate because we're very close to the um, receiving station. Um, but for some reason, there's um, you know a little, little gap. This is also very close, so you probably do travel quite quite a long way in a minute. What we might have to do is try, um, you know, reducing the time down to a couple of seconds or something, and get it to get it to beacon out a little bit less. Um, but anyway, you get the gist of, of what's happening here. So we've got a, a journey out and a journey back in. Um, and you know it's pretty pretty much it's quite interesting how the points are very similar even though we come back at completely different times the points where we're getting um, you know a, a, a signal back are, are, aren't too far apart so it may be it's just down to um, down to the position and when the beacon actually sends so if you if you increase the resolution you probably see lots of small dots we'll have to try that and see what what happens anyway zoom right out What's interesting is is the sheer distance that we're managing to get on UHF. Um, this total distance here, what we can do here is if you go into Google Earth and then go into Show Elevation Profile, this is a really useful tool on Google Earth. Um, this shows you the topography of the land, which is all over the place. You can see here it's it's literally up and down, up and down, up and down, as you'd expect. Now our endpoint is over here, right over here. So we're looking at if we scroll up and on the topography map, you can see here we're about 21 kilometres away. So it's 21 kilometres um, distance. This whole distance here is 21 kilometres there and 21 kilometres back. Um, and now our start point is is quite quite a low. It's 44 metres, and then right the way up here. Obviously, it's fairly similar, but you've got these massive hills in between here. Now, normally you think, well, you know, would it would the, would the signal get over those? But um, of course, it does because it obviously finds um, finds different ways around. Um, the path is is different, but there's some very low points here, which you know, are seriously shadowed by um, you know RF. And if you look closer in. You, you see that there isn't any points in these in these sort of areas, so that's obviously because we're, you know, we're quite in a 
<clears throat> probably in a bit of a, a null of of our, of our signal. I mean, but you know, it, it's not everything to go by. Topography isn't everything to go by, of course, because there's lots of other factors. But um, it's quite an interesting uh, experiment to actually see this live on a map. Now, if you do this in lots of different directions, you can get a really good idea of your coverage, um, your kind of potential coverage areas, and areas where signal is stronger, signal is lower, um, and everything else. Um, again, I'll go back to the thing where I say, if you were to increase the resolution a lot, what would happen is then you'd end up with loads and loads of points. And um, you know, there there is another piece of software which you can use to track um, signal strength as well. So, um, like the RSSI of the um, transmitting and received signal, so that then you could actually really get an idea of your of your um, real time coverage. Um, but when we get to the end. You can see, you know, there's the same situation. We're sort of in a in a car park over here, and um, what you're seeing over here is huge amounts of <laughs> driving about and um, you know different marker points for for um, sitting in that um, sitting in that car park and then trying to get out the car park. Everything else, so it's quite an interesting um, quite an interesting sort of experiment to actually see this sort of live on a map. Coming back. Um, I think we you see there's only one point there. That that maybe I think that I think that's probably the the, the, the going and this one's coming back. We don't get a point right until right until up here. Um, but you know, it could just be what it is. You're in a built up area here and, and um, it could be just down to sort of again your resolution, your beacon every one minute. Um, but yeah, it's that's um, that's how you can do it. When you first sort of load this into Google Earth, what happens is you end up with a very very thin line. I'll try and show you what it is. But what you can do is you can change the colour and the width and the opacity on the map as well. So you can get a good idea of um, you know, and get a good idea. Of, you can see it a lot more clearly because when you first initially start, I think on part one of the video when I've done it, it was it was showing a tiny little hairline which you can hardly see. So you need to um, basically go into here, properties, style, and then change that there, and then you can actually see it <clears throat> a lot more clearly on the map. Um, but all in all, um, it's it's a useful tool to be able to. Um, I'm trying to do here is just you know get this panned up. Um, it's a useful tool to sort of give you an idea of what your potential coverage distance would be. So we're looking at you know, providing the land is, is similar, you could be looking at, you know, a radius of something like this, which is pretty staggering. I know that I've definitely, from this um, station here, using this on the handbands, I've actually managed to pick up stations all, all around this sort of area. So it's quite a, quite a good quite a good test if you're, you know, saves you waiting around for people to come up and, and try and get signal reports and things like that if, you, if you've got the um, ability to do it. Uh, you just, all you need is two, <clears throat> all you need is two, um, two radios, so you just need one with a GPS uh, ability to beam out the beacon and then the other one with um, the other one to just receive it and a PC to, uh, to run the software and, and, and take the logs. So yeah, that's part two of um, of the of the DMR GPS and um, range tracking. This can be used for all sorts of all sorts of purposes. You can track multiple stations as well, um, because what you've got here is you've got an ID, which this is the radio that it's connected to, and this is the one that's um, beacon in here. So um, you can have a list of all sorts of you know, stations. You could have every every number um, from one to one to a hundred, and you could just track a hundred um, on this map as well. And make them all different colours on the on the map, and you could see exactly where everything's going. Um, of course, it's possible to do all this in real time as well um, with other software. You'd be able to show live right now where is that particular portable, and that's how you know the dispatchers do it with um, sort of security and, and all the other solutions but yeah hopefully it's interesting um and um we'll be carrying on playing around with this and uh, seeing seeing what else um, we can do so thanks for watching